Good evening and welcome to the live exchange. I'm Dr. Pamela. And I'm Robert Pierce. And uh, today we are talking about, I am not okay. I'm not okay. What does it mean? Um, I am not okay, what now? Um, So we have joining us today, um, Arnita Holliman, and she is a a licensed professional counselor, um, as well as a certified coach. And she does a lot of work in the community to really talk about um, or to address um, issues of um, trauma and and how, you know, helping people overcome that, you know, resolving issues within the community from a deep level. Um, and so we're going to give Arnita an opportunity to really just kind of go in on everything that she does, um, but really giving um, just you know an overview of what we're going to be talking about today. It is it's so important because we're seeing in so many ways that, that people are not okay and people are really trying. Um, and some yeah. people have, have given up and, you know, and we've seen some headlines about that as well. And so um, really important issue that we um, really wanted to address on today's show. So um, yes, so we are, yes, the context is still coronavirus and yes, the context is still the pandemic because it is still very much a reality oh, in our wow. world right now. And yes, it, is. it is our commitment to help people, you know, kind of get through this. So um, so definitely check us out, um, stay, uh, comment on us, uh, comment on uh, the Facebook Live page, um, you know, ask questions, engage. Uh, because we will definitely um, want to respond to you in real time. Um, Today, we are going to be looking at trending topics, what's trending, what's out there in the research, what's being said. Um, And then a little bit later, we're going to have a special um, musical guest who's going to join us, who is also working with, um, you know, be right back on the live exchange. We'll be back. All right. Welcome back to the live exchange. I'm Dr. Pamela. And I'm Robert Pierce. And uh, we have Arnita Holloman. She is a licensed uh, therapist who is based in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and she's mm-hmm. going to be join you know joining us in a second. But in the meantime, Robert, um, yes. how are you doing, and how are the people in your world doing? Um, we're doing okay over here. Um, yeah. Making the best of you know what we can do. Everyone is still staying home, um, but more and more, I'm going outside for myself. Like I spent a few hours just um, today, just messing around in the yard. You know, doing some yard work, getting some sun. So yeah, venturing out yeah. more, walking the puppy now. You know, now I take oh. him for a walk. So <laughs> you know, it's you know, it's a beautiful day here in Atlanta, almost um, ninety degrees. So I spent some time okay. outside. So I'm doing we're doing it well here. Yeah, 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 it is it's how about you? Beautiful. How are you doing? Doing well. Um, you know, just the the workloads are um it feels different when you're working from home. And it I does. usually work from home, but when everybody else is working from home. It, it 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 makes my working from home different. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so it's an adjustment. It's a different thing. It's it's nice when I'm working from home by myself and everybody who's on my team. They've got yeah. other things going on. You know, um, you know, faculty meetings. Everybody's right, working right. from home, so faculty meetings happen differently. So it's just different to not to be in this kind of space. So yeah. um, it's an adjustment. It is. Um, I tell you what was strange for me on Friday. I took all my conference calls from the bed. <laughs> and I laid across, if you remember, I, I laid across my bed and I was like, I'm not moving today. There's there's a meme that's doing it. Is that you on the meme? <laughs> <laughs> that's me. Yeah. I, I made a conscious effort. I'm not getting out the bed today. So you and just started wonderful. doing that? I've been yeah. doing that. <laughs> I just started. First time. <laughs> so, Arnita, we've been uh, just checking in with each other. Yeah. Um, how are you doing? Because you've got a lot on your plate. You're not only dealing with your personal stuff, but you're helping other people, you know, right. come through on their stuff. Oh, I think she's muted. Yeah. Uh-oh. She's on mute. Yeah, we can't hear you. Uh-oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, keep trying to make noises. Okay. And then <laughs> if we hear that voice come through. Yeah, keep talking. We can't hear you yet, but keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we can't hear her. Right. We can't hear you, Arnita. Um, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> it'll come. Well, you know, it'll come through. Um, oh, yeah. So we'll, we'll keep working on it. Um, so we are, I, I'm not sure if we're going into trending topics now or after the break, but either way. Trending topics. Let's go trending, trending topics. topics. Let's go. <laughs> We're going to make it up as we go. (laughs) 
our, I knew really needed Arnita's feedback on. So it, you know, really hope that we get her audio working because yeah. um, the training topics is really geared to the feedback of somebody who's kind of in the mental health you know professions. So really, um, so there's a couple of things that have happened this week. Um, and 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 by the way, um, you know, Arnita is saying that she can hear me, but nobody else. So yeah. just, just a heads up. Um, so the there's a couple of things that happened. Three major things that have happened this week that I think might be representative of some of the things that we um, uh, kind of a, a indication of. Oh, now I think we lost Dr. Pam too. <laughs> Am I back? You're back um, now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can hear you whenever you say you lose me, so that's good to know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but, but the first situation that I saw happen was um, here in Atlanta, Georgia. It was a it was a tragedy with a family with five children, and mm. the parents came home, and all five children had deceased. Oh boy! Um, I never. I didn't, well, I don't. I haven't listened to the I news. Don't... In three weeks, I haven't listened yeah, to Yeah, it came across my timeline. And wow. um, unfortunately, they're saying that it may have been carbon monoxide poisoning. Oh, my. And, you know, and, and what's so tragic about that is that these children would have been at school normally um, during this mm -hmm. time. And so, again, we're, you know, we're needing to choose from, you know, the parents having to choose from going to work, leaving the children at home. I don't know what line of work they were in or if they were essential, right. you know, um, yeah. you know workers or what but all i know is the children had to be you know left at home, at home. Yeah. parents are in a vine um so that's one tragedy um wow. another tragedy is um an er doctor who um died by suicide this week hmm. um, she was overwhelmed she um, had contracted coronavirus herself and um overcame it went back to work. Her family members said probably too soon, but you know, I'm sure there was much more involved with her um, suicide than going back too soon, but, but yeah, but went yeah. back and um, you know, and, and this is a fighter, you know, this is a woman who was described as a fighter um, and she passed away. Um, wow. by suicide. Um, and then the final case is in Arnita's um, home in, in Arnita's town in, in Milwaukee, um, tragedy stuck, struck in a family where um, five members of that family, I believe, um, were killed. And um, I, and I don't know a whole lot beyond that the, the father, the husband called to say that my family is dead. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, you know, and, and for me, I think looking at these three cases, um, there is some indication about our health score, you know, with yes. what's going on in our society. I don't know the dynamics behind the family members, um, you know, being murdered. Yeah. But mm -hmm. what I do know is that family members are all at home in one house right now. And yeah. the level of stress and if there is abuse and if there are things, they're going to be exacerbated right now. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So I want Arnita to comment on all of this. So we're going to go on a break. And okay. uh, when we yeah, let's try to get this right. Here, voice. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be back. Oh, welcome back again to the live exchange. I'm Dr. Pamela. And I'm Robert Pierce. Hey, and we are joined by Arnita Holyman. She is a licensed professional counselor as well as a coach, a certified coach. And, um, and what we were talking about prior to the break, the show really is looking at what happens when we're not okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of times we ask the question, how are you? How are you? Well, I'm okay. I'm good. Yeah, I'm you good. know, our politically correct answer. Yeah, blessed. So when what happens when we're not okay? Um, and, and so just giving uh, just a quick overview of, of the trending topics that we talked about. Um, Arnita, I was, I was pointing out that there were three pivotal events that I saw reported in the news this week that I think is indicative of our mental health score in which, in which we have a family in Georgia, um, in which five children were found dead when the parents came home. And so, mm -hmm. um, and so that, that story, I think you heard me talk about, right? Um, and so and, and in that case, the parents were at work, children were at home. Um, it was possibly par carbon monoxide um, poisoning. And, you know, in most cases, those kids would have been at school or the parents would not have had to have chosen between work. Another situation is um, the, the, the doctor, the ER emergency room doctor who committed suicide, died by suicide um, after having battled coronavirus herself, but being on the front lines of that battle for others. Um, her family described her as a fighter. 
and yet she she died by suicide. And then the third case is the one that's happening right there close to home for you, Arnita, um, in Milwaukee, where a family, five members of a family were killed. Um, and I don't know all the details, but I do, I believe I, I read that the, the father called to say his family is dead. And, um, and, and again, why is this indicative of p p possible coronavirus? I just think that right now there's a lot of people that are at home in really difficult situations, abusive families, and everything is being exacerbated right now. So if it was already bad, the potential for it to be even worse is there. So I, I wanted you to kind of speak on, you know, what, what is going on and, and, you know, in terms of the mental health score here in, in our country. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Dr. Pam and Robert. Um, in terms of what's going on, I think we this, this virus and this global pandemic has really exposed um, a lot of places where we have a lot of work to do um, as it relates to a number of things, but in particular, um, our mental health. And so we've got to be able to sense, you know, what's going on, when is it, when am I not okay? For some people, they aren't able to, to tell the difference between when yeah. they're okay and when they're not okay. And for some, being not okay has become so normal, it's the standard. Mm -hmm. And so that eventually that becomes okay. One of the things that, you know, we've been concerned about and we saw unfortunately, you know, culminate into, you know, a mass murder this, this earlier this week, um, was we've been worried about folks who are in unhealthy relationships and their situations with domestic violence and with the stay at home orders um, as a result of the, you know, of COVID-19, then folks are in close quarters with people who um, will harm them and for extended periods of time. And so it's a breeding ground. And unfortunately, it increases the risk. It increases both the vulnerability and risk of, of you know, of domestic violence, sexual violence, any number of family violence in general. Mm -hmm. And we know that those hotlines have gone up, the calls to mm -hmm. those domestic violence hotlines have gone up. On one hand, I'm glad people are calling. On the other hand, I, I hate to hear that that so many people need to call. Um, and, and in addition, the, the suicide hotline has gone up by 900 mm -hmm. percent in, in wow. calls. Yeah. That's so nice. so this this is just laying the groundwork. We've got so much yeah. more to cover today. Um, so we, we have to go to a break, but um, just wanted to kind of get started there. Um, and we'll continue on uh, when we come back. We'll be back. All right, all right. So the science um, is, we're, we're looking at trauma today. And um, mm -hmm. one of the things that, there's two different studies that I want to just kind of put out there, just throw out there and can be the backdrop for some of what we talk about. All right. um, there was one study that I read that I actually was so her premise was that everybody doesn't experience post-traumatic stress and you know everybody who goes through trauma doesn't experience post-traumatic stress you know that, that some people just okay. don't they don't get it and 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 so for the most part I said okay well you know I can see that but what she was saying as I was trying to debate her as I read the article um what really she was saying that that some people's trauma is just ongoing there's no post so when we talk about post-traumatic people who are living in war zones people who are living in really um you know violent situations they are constantly in trauma and so they don't have the luxury and this is where i was trying to debate her when she called post-traumatic stress a luxury i was like what is she talking about well Everybody doesn't get that luxury. And I thought, whoa, it was mind blowing for me, you know, and, and as much as reading as I do in trauma, I thought, whoa, how come I never thought of that? So so that's that's one thing. Um, and, and the other thing is a, a, an article which is kind of related to this. A lady on my page is trying to debate me about it. Um, and basically what it said is that some of us who, who are responding in a really calm manner to this pandemic, to the quarantine, is not necessarily because we're really calm, but it's because we have normalized trauma and that we just, we, we've just, we're numb. And we don't know how, you know, our bodies don't respond differently. That's just how we respond to it. And that we need to be aware of whether or not we're actually having a response and that calmness is an actual response to trauma. Uh, one lady got on my page said, I ain't claiming that, I ain't claiming that. And I said, that's cute, but if that's what's going on, you know, so go ahead, Arnita. I'm gonna just let you just jump in. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, so you spot on those articles and your thoughts around this. For some folks, being outside of the trauma, away from it, um, has not happened for them. 
um, and or it hasn't happened in a very long time. So some people are living in traumatic situations um, constantly. And so then you're going to see an elevation in your whole, you know, adrenal system, your cortisol, that stress hormone, all of those things that get you activated to fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. And so to your point about the folks who may seem a little more calm, um, yes, we can, you know, practice you know, good mental health and, and use all the tools we have in our box, we have to still face the reality of what's going on. Um, and for some people, it doesn't necessarily mean everyone, but for some people who have this uncanny kind of calmness, um, may be the fawning. And so, you know, the fight, you, your your system is trying, your body is telling you, your brain telling you there's a threat. You want to fight to get away from it. You want to get away from it. So you might flee, that's the flight, run away, whatever. Um, freeze, you're just in shock, stuck. So fawning is really about acquiescing. I'm going to give in to whatever is going on or whatever is happening. And if, you know, I just don't do too much, make many, make waves, I just let it pass, it will go away. And so it's about keeping a healthy balance between I am taking good care of myself and that's how I'm working through this versus I am really not dealing with the issue and um, have it, similar to like a false sense of humility, like this false sense of calm. Um, and so we've got to really know when we're doing one or the other. Mm, false sense of calm. That's interesting. False sense of calm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So uh, the, the other question that I have is when, um, because we are still in this, I'm wondering to what extent is the the whole idea of there is no such thing as a post for some people that there is no post is that where we are right now because we're not post this we're in it so we're are still we, in it right yeah. present yeah yeah we are very much still in it and so not everyone and you know you've done extensive research and trauma but not everyone who experiences what could be a traumatic or traumatizing event actually develops trauma symptoms, right? And so when we think about post-traumatic growth, there are some folks who are coming through this and they're finding meaning in it, they're growing in it. Um, however, you know, there's only so much our brain and our bodies can take in terms of that, that stress and chronic stress before it starts to impact us and, and, and affect, you know, our physical health, our mental health, our relationships, our work, everything we do. And so we are very much still in it. And so we need to find ways to get through it, get through it in the healthiest way possible and, and hopefully thrive, as, you know, coming out of it. But that doesn't mean um, ignoring the reality of the fact that it's here. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, Robert, good. not to put you on the spot, but you always ask really good questions. So I just, <laughs> I wanted to <laughs> hear some of your awesome questions that you might have if, and if you don't have them right well, now. Well, at this time, no, I'm taking it all in. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I'm forming the question, so let's go on, but it's coming. But okay. I'll, yeah, I, it well, really I do have, I do have a question for you, Robert. Okay. Because if, so on one hand, we have Arnita, who is working with people from the, the standpoint of counselor, oh therapist and so forth. And then we have Robert who is working with people from the standpoint of ministry. Yeah. Um, and, and so I'm wondering, Robert, if you're seeing an uptick at all from the ministry standpoint, especially with churches not being in session physically, you know, right now, and whether or not, you know, people are responding in certain ways because of that. Yeah, there's definitely an uptick um, in cases. Um, I get a lot now um, you know, inboxes on Facebook and all that, where members want to just talk and, um, they're just trying to process and, and, um, and what they're processing is their faith against the facts, mm. um, that they see. And, you know, this is the time now is really where, you know, your faith is being tested. Now is the time where, um, all that, all the things you said, you believed, you have to put it into um, application now. And we're Ooh. finding out, you know, where our faith is. Um, for many of us, um, the faith we thought, we thought we had, it wasn't there. Um, and for some of us, the faith we didn't think we had um, has been there all the time and is just coming yeah. out now. And so this is really in an awakening, I'm finding of exactly who you are and where you are in your life. Um, yeah. Having a lot of conversations of people reevaluating their life decisions. Mm. 
Interesting, you know, like regarding marriage. I, I don't know why marriage. The whole about gamut, it. marriage relationships. <laughs> Who um, are you with? <laughs> yeah, marriage relationships, um, children, jobs, everything. Um, moving where they move to is like okay. Um, especially those of us who are like myself, um, you know, fifty and over or close to fifty. Um, a lot of people are, are reevaluating and and are making changes in their lives. Um, I have I've known three people who have quit their jobs. Oh. Um, wow. Just because they realize that life is way too short now, you mm -hmm. know, and now they want to experience the life that they've been dreaming about and talking about living, but was afraid to do. But now they found the courage in this. Wow. Well, are you seeing anything similar to that, um, Arnita, in terms of people reevaluating their lives and, you know, what's going on yeah. there? Yeah, yeah, me. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. And so it makes perfect sense, right? So when we get in, when we're in uncertain situations or there are uncertain times, it really does make us question what is going on, but not just what's going on outside of us, what's going on inside of us, what's yeah. going on in terms of the decisions that we've made for our lives, what's going on with our work, our careers, our family, all of that, our finances. We start to reevaluate our lives. And so on mm -hmm. one hand, that's a really good thing. Um, yeah. and, well, I just say just in general, it's a good thing. Um, and, and again, when I was talking about the post-traumatic growth and, and people uh, finding meaning or making meaning, that's one of the way that they, ways that they do that. Um, not just like, you know, well, God has a plan for us, you know, but really, where am I? What should I be doing? What's really important to me? And so, yes, I am hearing that from other people. I've been, I've been experiencing it myself, thinking about how much, you know, I'm working and how much I, time I spend working. And, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not spending as much time with the folks that I love and I care deeply about and that I know love and care deeply about me because I've spent so much time um, doing the work that I do. And so, then that's making me say, hey, I need to slow this down. And I might start out with these Zooms for now because we can't all get together. So we're doing, yeah. you know, little, you know, virtual house parties or whatever you want to call yeah. it, check-ins, do whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's reaffirming what's most important. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, and, you know, and just to kind of um, take it back in terms of what's going on specifically in the Milwaukee community, um, uh, what is going on? I know you said you were involved with, you know, the community initiatives to specifically with regards to this family. Um, you know, so I'm just curious to know, is do we know any of circumstances around that? You know, how, how is the community coming together? Um, yeah, so we don't know specifics in terms of why um, the shooter did what he did. Um, but what we do know is that a family and kind of multiple sides of families were, were murdered um, in, a, in a horrific you know, situation. And unfortunately, um, there was a three-year-old survivor who witnessed everything. And so... Wow. That, that's just another, you know, layer there. Um, and it, so my heart goes out to the family. But the community has pulled together in an amazing way that we know that we can do. And we have done other in other times. And so I work, although I'm, I'm a licensed professional counselor and coach, I work in the city's Office of Violence Prevention. So the, the city of Milwaukee Office of Violence Prevention, we're a part of the health department. And so we're sometimes responding to situations um, like this. So we've been working along with other community responders, other um, organizations like the Salvation Army, um, other grassroots organizations like Program the Park. We, um, I've, we've convened um, faith leaders and you know all pulled together. So we've been pulling, the community really has been pulling together in an amazing way to provide support and resources for the, the family. Okay, awesome. awesome. Okay, well, I, I definitely have more questions that just stemmed mm -hmm. from that alone. So when we come back, um, we'll, we'll dig a little bit deeper. Thank you. Okay. We'll be back. Keeping your balance with Dr. Pamela. Dr. Pamela. Dr. Pamela. All right. So this, <laughs> this week's challenge is to check on somebody. How are you doing? And don't just wait for the politically correct answer. When they say, I'm fine. Okay, say, okay, good. How are you really doing? How are you doing? Yeah. Get specifics. Find out. Dig deep. Don't take the surface answer. 
Right, right. So I, you know, and Arnita, do you have anything to add to that? I mean, that is what I want you all to do this week. Yeah, yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. Well, just like when people say, I, I'm feeling some kind of way. I'm like, well, what is that feeling? What does like, that mean? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so name it. Yeah, describe it. Name an emotion. Some, you know, there's more than just happy, sad. Yeah, I, I have a question for Anita, specifically with this. What do you do when you're tired of calling people? You know, everybody has the sad song, and it's starting to weigh on you. You know. Mm-hmm. Okay, wait. We can't answer that now. We got to okay. answer that when we come back because that's me. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll be back. All right, hey, welcome back to the Light Exchange. I'm Dr. Pamela, and uh, we're joined today. Robert Pierce and I are joined by Arnita Holyman, and she is a licensed professional counselor, as well as a certified life coach, and as well as an advanced. Ambassador, I'm just that of, of violence prevention <laughs> in her city. <laughs> um, and so, right before uh, we went to the break, we issued the balance challenge, which is check on somebody this week, even if it's just one person, um, and make it a new person every week, but, but, um, check on people this week and, and make sure that you're, you know, really kind of authentically looking at for how they're really doing. Robert had a really good question right before the break. I'm going to let you go ahead and pose that question again, Robert. Okay. My question is, um, what do you do when um, the calls just become overwhelming, you know, um, for myself? And I, I'm going to cater this question for myself. I often find myself, my phone rings off the hook and it's constantly you know, sad story after sad story, legitimate stories. I'm not diminishing everyone. Um, but when is it, when when do you say enough's enough and I can't answer a call no more? Because there's someone out there, they're the, they're the go-to person for their network. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And by, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm, so I'm that person and, and then I work with a bunch <laughs> of people who are that person, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and so it's really about creating balance, you know, or boundaries rather. You know, people say you need balance, and I think it's it's more it's not as much balance because you're not always going to have that fifty fifty spread between when you're giving out and when you're taking your own time. But what you do need to do is create healthy boundaries around your time. And so whenever you're saying no, you know, yes to something, you're saying no to something else. So mm-hmm. being mindful of if I say yes to this person, if I say yes to helping this person, if I say yes to this phone call, just one more call, what am I saying no to? Am I saying no to sleep? Am I saying no to rest? Am I saying no to study time? Am I saying no to fun time, family time, or just nothing at all? Because sometimes we just need some nothing. (laughs) So so, so it's about about setting those boundaries. Um, and, And for some people, they like to have it more structured, where it's, you know, at six o'clock that's my cutoff and that's it for other people they may not necessarily have a specific cutoff time however they know hey this is where i need to cut off i'm done for the day even if i don't feel you know tired or fatigued i'm done um and i'm gonna take the rest of the night for whatever or i'm gonna take this whole weekend and not you know attend to others um emergencies or their issues Here's what's interesting about people is that uh, one, we are very resilient. We're in most cases, people are very resilient. Yeah. Two, if they really need the help, they will find it. Like you are not the only one. And so some of it is us really learning to take off our cake. Um, and we don't have mm. to be people's savior. So there's a God that, you know, there are yeah. other people yeah. that can step in to help. Um, and and so and when we will when we do that, oftentimes they will maneuver or do whatever it is that they need to do to find what they need. And sometimes we've been standing in the way of them mm. doing that because we're always jumping in, because yeah. we're always answering the call, because we're always stepping in to help. And so it's just finding a peaceful, you know, and help healthy boundary for yourself. Um, And that can look different at different times. And so again, that's why I'm saying it may not be a straight 50-50 balance sometimes, all the time or whenever, but you gotta know where the boundary line is for you individually. Yes, I think that's great. Yeah, Yeah. thank you. And that means we have to be honest with ourselves about what we need. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We've got to be honest with ourselves about what we need. So to, to the whole topic of today, like it's okay to not be okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay to not be okay. It's okay to be tired. It's also okay to just want to not do something else, right? Yeah. <laughs> to not be that person for that time <laughs> being. Yes. And so that's the other thing is we think that we have to have excuses. And so mm. we'll make excuses for mm. I can't help you because of this, or I couldn't answer the call because of that. And it's not really necessary. And so when you say, when you ask the question, what can you do? There are a number of things you can do. If you answer the call, you can say no to whatever the request is. Yeah, which is okay. a sentence, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. no, it is. Calls. You don't have to say anything extra. You don't need to give an explanation. The other option is you could not answer. They could go to voicemail or they could send you a text message and you get back to it in your own time. And that is totally okay. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about, I need to respond to this person right now. I have to be getting back to them right away. Nope. When you are ready, when you have the time and you feel like you have the resources. Hmm. And guess what? Awesome. People adapt to they you do. when you set those parameters and those boundaries mm -hmm. people adapt to them and they we're so do. worried that you know we're going to be viewed in some kind of way and maybe we will be mm -hmm. but at the end of the day yeah you know they'll adapt and if you're being your truth and, and you're being yeah. your authentic self if they see you some kind of way and you're being your authentic self then they that's you need to see that that's not your that. issue gotcha yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah awesome thank you yeah, and that's a great point that you say that that's not your issue. And, and part of the problem is that we often take on things that are not our responsibility, Ooh. right? <laughs> and so it's not it's not your responsibility to carry the weight of you know if that person is upset with you because you did not do X Y Z. Right. Um, that's on them to determine why is it that I feel like I had to have it from that person. And am I balancing what I what my expectations are of that person? Mm -hmm. Right mm -hmm. now, some people they're not people are not always doing that, but that's our individual responsibility to do that. If I'm calling on Dr. Pam all the time for help, and she decides she's not going to you know answer, or she's not responding, or she's saying no, then I have to take a step back and say, okay, why do I keep calling her though? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Is there, is there another option? And not only is there another option, do I have the resources to take care of what I need? Because sometimes people don't recognize the wealth of resources they already have within oh, themselves. Okay. Yeah. And so Absolutely. being able to call on what resources do I have? And so in those situations, especially when you have the repeat callers, you can stop them and say, remember that time when such and such. Remember you got through that? Remember mm -hmm. how well that turned out? What it was it about you that changed that situation? What was it about you that got you through that? And so we're quick to then say, oh, that's because so-and-so helped me out. Or because, no, but there was something in you. Yeah. And yeah. so if we can help people dig a little deeper and find out what was it within themselves, then they recognize, oh, I do have that. Yes, I was able to do that. Okay, now. How do you maximize that skill or that resource, that personal right. internal resource and use it again? And use it for yourself. So, yeah. so ask yourself that question because one of the things mm -hmm. I, I talk about a lot from a coaching standpoint is, is coaching yourself through a situation. Mm -hmm. Asking yourself, what did I do before? What resources did I tap mm -hmm. into before mm -hmm. internally that, that allowed mm -hmm. me to get the last time I was going through something? Yeah, yep. that's good. Precisely, yeah. Wow, awesome. Oof. Oh, stop. Well, okay, stop. now can I ask my other question now? Sure. Okay. Um, this is my question. Um, a lot of the states are now lifting the stay at home um, restrictions. And I know I've been talking to quite a few people. They're very anxious about mm -hmm. leaving their home now because they're seeing um, what they believe is reckless behavior yes. um, outside. So now that we're transitioning now to we're getting ready to start leaving our homes, whether we we ready or not. Um, what do we say to the people who are now? These are very, you know, anxiety filled moments for them, mm -hmm. you know, on how they're going to navigate in the world out there that looks so, totally different now. Yeah, I would say um, if, if at all possible, don't leave. Yeah. Stay home, hmm. you know, um, because here's the reality. We are we, you know. We're not out of the woods yet. No. Um, I know right. no states are reopening, and that's an individual governor's decision. 
Um, but we are seeing the death tolls are still very high. We, in states that, that have reopened, um, you know, they say that you need like two weeks to see, you know, of lower numbers to flatten the curve, to say the curve is actually flattened enough to, you know, make that kind of call. But, but we have to do what's best for ourselves. And that's really the same thing. We're talking about the same thing. How do I take care of myself? How do I take mm-hmm. care of the folks that are in my home mm-hmm. and make sure that we are okay? And right now, the best thing you can do is continue to stay home <laughs> as much as possible. And when you have to be out, the social distancing, right. get outside, uh, get some fresh air, you know, take a walk, those kinds of things. So you don't have to be at home 24 hours a day. Mm-hmm. But out in public, out in large crowds, semi large crowds, medium crowds, no. Um, mm-hmm. Now is not the time. We're not ready. Um, we're not ready. And unfortunately, people will die. And that, that's a very sad and horrible um potential outcome from this. And so whatever each one of us can do to both keep ourselves safe and to keep others safe so we're not passing on the virus. Yeah. So we need to continue to do that. Right. And for people who are having, I'm sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Mm, no, go ahead. People who are having anxiety around that, just recognizing um, what is that anxiety about? So it may it it may be you know coming from a number of different places, still related to the same thing, but just knowing what that anxiety, where that's coming from, what that's about. Um, and so, regardless, you're gonna have to work on some tools to help you reduce the anxiety, regardless. Because if you have to go back out to work, you have to go back. Right. Then then you definitely want to be able to take care of that anxiety. Absolutely. All right. Well, we're we're going to go to a break, um, and 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 as we um, are are progressing through the show, we do have a, a special musical guest who is going to be joining us, Carola Taylor, um, also known as Liziana. And um, so, uh, stay tuned for that as well. And we'll be right back. All right. Hello and welcome to the second half of the live exchange. I'm Dr. Pamela, and I'm Robert Pierce. And uh, today we are doing a check in on, um, you know, yeah, how you doing? And and if the answer is, you know what, I'm actually not okay, that's what we're going to be addressing today. That's what we've been addressing today. I'm not okay. Um, and so we have our our resident licensed professional counselor, Arnita. Holloman, who's helping us through that conversation, as well as a musical guest. Is she here yet? Should we, shall we, shall we bring her on or are we? Okay. Um, And so, um, so really what we kind of cover in the, in the first half of the show is just um, all of the different, um, the ways, I guess, in which the, I'm not okay, you know, Mm -hmm. might manifest. Um, You know, we've seen, um, and we talked very briefly about suicide, which um, we might want to just, you know, touch on that a little bit more, Um, but also family violence, also feeling overwhelmed and so forth. Um, And so, um, so a lot of, uh, go ahead. There's just um, so much coming at us from all different areas. You know, Mm -hmm. a lot of people are, are struggling financially, not just emotionally, you know, they, they lost their job. Um, you know, the, the stimulus check hasn't come for them yet. Um, you know, things are right. not in order for them financially. And now, you know, they're worried about children or, you know, they may have sick children in the house or sick parents they're mm-hmm. taking care of. And then, you know, other mental health issues. There's so many things, um, yes. you know, running out of food. You know, we can go on for days. Oh, my gosh. You um, know, that, that, that has been really disturbing to see um, on the news with the cars, the, the mile long, hour long yeah. of cars looking, waiting for food. Right. And we're talking about families who maybe have never been in need of food before, but, you know, this is their first time. Absolutely. And yeah. yeah and so, you know, so they're not just going out to get food. They're risking their lives to go out to get food. Right. You know, right. and that just that just acerbates things. And then, you know, if you're a single mom and you have children, do you take your babies out and stand in those long lines for food? Right. You know, what it, you know, it's so much. Right. I know. And that's that's the thing is is making these kinds of decisions are, you know, it, it's difficult. It's challenging. Um, and and I don't know. And, and that adds a lot to the anxiety, you know, that that Arnita was talking yeah, about earlier. And, you know, how do you deal with that anxiety? Yeah, um, because it, it gets overwhelming um, for myself and for others. I know it does, you know. Yeah. Um, and I've been okay. Um, 
you know, as far as, you know, my general needs, we were able to pay bills, uh, you know, I haven't lost an income, I actually gained two incomes. Mm. Um, you know, we have a freezer full of food, Yeah. but everything still isn't okay. I'm still worried about family members in New York. Elder, you know what I mean? It's so yeah. much um, to deal with. And just because I have a job today doesn't mean tomorrow, I'm, I, you know what I mean? It all can go. Right, right. And so, um, we have right. to be careful and find avenues that we can take care of ourselves, um, physically, mentally, spiritually, you know, the whole gamut, because it's, we're taking on a lot. Right, right. Um, and, you know, it, it also taking on a lot, you know, like you said, not just for us, but also for other people in our lives that we care for, people who are in our households. Uh, so there's just so many dynamics. So it, it really, you know, the purpose of the show is to let people know that if you're not okay, it's not only okay to say that, but it's, it's we are, you know, compelling you or imploring yeah. that you say that. So that Absolutely. And do. not just say it's, it's, you're not okay, but now let's take some steps to do what we need to do to get you okay. Right. You know, absolutely. because we can't just sit around and I'm not OK. OK, now let's get you some resources right. so that we can move from where you are. Yes. Yes. But, you know, that first step, first say the step word, is, speak yeah. it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> can't deal with it if it's not exposed. Right. All right. Well, we'll be right back. We'll be back. All right. Welcome back to the Live Exchange. I'm Dr. Pamela. And I'm Robert Pierce. And we are joined by Arnita Holyman. And I just asked you, and I, I don't even know what, <laughs> what you Holloman. <laughs> yes, Arnita Holloman. Holloman. <laughs> and uh, I never say her last name. I always, you know, mm -hmm. Arnita. You know, so. <laughs> so um, we, are, we are talking about what happens if your statement of truth is, I am not okay. Now what? Um, and one element I really wanted to focus in on, we, we talked earlier about the different headlines that was happening in, in you know, one family, the children were left at home and you know died of carbon monoxide poison. And we talked about the mass shooting. And then there was also the suicide. Like these are three different situations that I think are indicative of the types of challenges that we're seeing people um, handle. With the suicide rate going Dub or not doubling, I'm sorry, going up, I'm not suicide rate, I'm sorry, the calls to the suicide hotline going up 900%, which sounds insane. Wow. I, would, I just want to speak about, I want to talk about that, and I just want to hear do. your thoughts on that, um, Arnita. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, 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 a, that's a very large you know, increase. And so to what, what you said earlier, it's great that people are calling. Yes. Not so great that people are in a place where they feel like they have to call. Right. Um, and so I'm going to just go with the side of people are actually making the call, and that is a good thing. Part of the problem I think we're having, or some folks are having right now, is trying to function like normal in the middle of a crisis. Mm. And it's okay to not function exactly like you normally would if you were not, if we, the world, was not in the middle of a crisis. Right. Um, and so taking pause to recognize that I am not going to feel like I do on a bright, sunny day when everything's going well and mm -hmm. I can go outside and do whatever I want. This isn't that. Yeah. And so how do we... Um, and then there's pressure, right? Because, and I, and I blame our culture and our society for some of this because we are a society that values and rewards busyness. Ugh. So when people are busy and they're right. doing a million things and you've got 12 jobs and you only sleep for two hours and 32 minutes, mm -hmm. like that is rewarding. Like while you are a go-getter, you're a boss, you're a hustler, you're yeah. grinding. And it's like, we've got to pull that back and stop yes. grinding and we've got to really um, Lord, I, for the minister on the line, like, stop toiling, <laughs> really. I mean, we've been no. toiling and working so, super hard. Yeah. Uh, we got to learn how to work smarter, and we have to learn that um, it doesn't matter how much we work, if we do not have good health, if we don't have good, you know, love, those mm -hmm. things are the essentials. That's like air and water. Yeah. Right. Um, and so when we... Um, really put that at the forefront we'll take better care of ourselves we'll have the expectation that other people will also take better care of themselves and we will hold each other accountable to do just that yes. um, and so a part of that struggle you know so for folks who are calling the suicide line it very well could be 
that it was the opportunity that they felt safe enough to call. Mm. So there may be folks who were already struggling, struggling and who've had suicidal ideations, who even per- possibly made attempts before, but they didn't feel like they could really call. And for whatever reason, and sometimes it's put on, you know, we, we put stuff on ourselves, but it's based on the experiences that we've had. Like, again, it's okay to not be okay. <laughs> And right now, it's even more so okay to not be okay. We may be giving people a little grace to, to not be okay now. And so they're feeling like, okay, I can make the call. So talk to me about, of course, so, so from a professional standpoint, I understand suicidal ideation, right? Um, but talk to me wh- about what that can look like in somebody's life. I mean, yes, they can, I, I'm visualizing it. I'm, I'm visualizing acting it out in, in certain ways, um, but, What's the difference between that and maybe I just had a fleeting thought, but now I'm really, I'm mm-hmm. fine. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, so suicidal ideation is really someone thinking about, you know, suicide. So it may be a passive thought or, or an active thought. So a passive thought would be something um, like, I wonder what it would be like if I weren't here. Uh, I wonder what, if people would care if, if, I, if I weren't here anymore or I were dead or whatever. An active thought is more like I'm thinking about killing myself. I want to kill myself or I want to harm myself. Um, and, and so um, go back to your question again, because I think I just lost it, but that's kind of like some of the, oh, what would it look like? Yeah, um, well, that and, and is the fleeting thought something we don't need to worry about versus the active thought, you know, but yeah. So here's the thing. Most people will have a fleeting thought of Mm -hmm. suicide at some point in their life. And so again, whether it's passive, more like, you know, I just want all this to be over, like end it, go to sleep, not wake up, whatever that thought is. Most people will have a a passing fleeting thought at some point Mm -hmm. where things start to, you know, move into concern is, when those thoughts are active thoughts, I want to harm myself. I'm really considering it. I'm thinking about a plan or um, uh, or what will I use or when. Um, also, when those thoughts continue to happen. So if you mm-hmm. have a fleeting thought and it doesn't come back, then okay. Um, but if, if it's a recurring fleeting thought, passive or active, if, if it's recurring, it lingers, that's where you have some cause for concern. Okay, that's that's really good to know. All right, well, um, we're, we're gonna continue this conversation, so stay with us on the live exchange. We'll be back. Recurring, fleeting thoughts, passive or active, recurring, it lingers, that's where you have to pause for concern. Okay, that's that's really good to know. Are we still right. hearing the show? Second chance. Did y'all hear that? Yeah. I heard a repeat. Okay. No worries. Hard at work here. <laughs> No worries. I need a massage. That's what I do miss massages. Oh my goodness. No <laughs> I'm like, when do massages open back up? <laughs> oh my gosh. I have a friend who does it mobily. Like she would come over, but I'm not ready. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, not yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm one yeah. of those people with the autoimmune thingamajigs. And so I'm like, okay. can't take no chances. Yeah. I've got some one of those, um, I don't know what those little things are. You- you patch on and uh, oh yeah the, yeah so oh, I got yeah I don't know the words are escaping I had an experience with one doing. of those oh okay I, it scared the heck out of me so I used to use it all the time and then one time I used it I accidentally it, it got uh, attached to the wire on my bra or something oh no that thing electrocuted <laughs> oh boy oh boy and I just picked it up and threw it across the room I never because I was doing this. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I was yeah, traumatized. That, yeah, yeah, that would have freaked me out too. But it does cool. work really well when you don't do, yeah. do it wrong. <laughs> when you don't attach it to metal, right? <laughs> yeah, that was awful. Yeah. But yeah, <sighs> yeah. So I've heard of people doing like the tennis ball thing against the wall. I haven't oh, tried that. I it's, that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the thing for me is that it's whatever those other things are, they can be helpful, but they're not the same because there's there's no. healing in touch and it's physical well, touch. 
That's and part of the struggle we're having right now. You know, I actually did a show on um, how we can take care of ourselves and our love languages. Mine's physical touch. And my mm -hmm. method is going to a massage therapist, you know, yep. and, and, and experiencing mm -hmm. that physical touch. And that was, yep. yeah. <laughs> no, mine is physical touch as well. So it's going to a ther massage therapist and hugging, like hugging. Yeah. I've been hugging for two days. I'm going to be having to do this now. This is the hug. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Oh man, what do we not have in common? My goodness. Right, right. We can have it. Come back, come back. All right, welcome back to the live exchange. All right, okay. Uh, Dr. Okay. <laughs> And today we are joined by Arnita Holyman, who is a licensed professional counselor based in Milwaukee and as well as a certified coach. Thank you for joining us and hanging out with us all this time. <laughs> um, I just have to say, by the way, the Academy of Creative Coaching just graduated its latest cohort of graduates as of 6 o'clock p.m. this evening Congratulations. from Charlotte, North Carolina. Woo -woo. Woo -woo. <laughs> Arnita is one of the, one of the graduates uh, from a previous cohort. But um, but yes, um, so they it was originally supposed to be based in Charlotte, turned to virtual, So um, which was a blessing for us because we ended up getting two international students in that group, um, one in the Netherlands and one in England, wow. as well as uh, a host of other people from all over the country. So it was it, it is a phenomenal group from what I've been hearing. So. Awesome. So yes, by the way, that's academyofcreativecoaching.com. So check them out. Um, <laughs> but we were talking about suicide and, and um, suicide ideation. And the reason why I asked the question I asked is because in my book, Letters to the Brokenhearted, I talk about my own moment of um, feeling kind of my own light going out. And, that, and I describe it that way because when I was in that phase of my life, um, my mentor said, you know, your light was out. And I didn't even know it. I didn't know it. But I remember walking around Marquette's campus, looking at my feet, thinking, I just want to fall to the ground. Like maybe if I yeah. fell to the ground, somebody would, you know, people would rescue me. It wasn't, that wasn't necessarily a suicidal thought, but it was a, I, I don't know what that was. Maybe you can define what that was, but it was just a moment where, yeah. and people will come get me and save me if I can just pass out and collapse on this ground right now. It didn't happen, but I, I was desperate for it to happen. I don't know what that is, but I'm sure yeah. there are other people who have felt that moment where I, I'm, I'm done. It's like, what is that? How would you describe that? And what can people do? Yeah, I think that that's a normal feeling that most people feel at some point. And so fall to the ground, maybe some other, you know, um, call for help that, that other people have. But at the end of the day, it's, it's, you know, your light going out, it's being overwhelmed, it's being overworked, any of those things, feeling unloved, whatever it is, um, we all have those moments where we're like, I need somebody to come and say, I need somebody, something, some, save me. you know, save me, help me, whatever it is that we need help with. And that's normal, it's okay. Um, the problem is, I think that we have not learned the language of asking for help. That's it. So when we don't ask for help, we take on more than we should. We hang on to it longer than we should. We continue to pile things on. We never say no or rarely say no. Um, or even the things that we should have on our plate or our shoulders, uh, we um, don't ask for help even with that. So right. um, and we've got to learn the language of, of asking for help. And when someone says no, or they can't do it, or they try to shame you mm. into carrying it, because that whole be strong, you can't be weak. We've right. got to really change our understanding of strength. Um, there is nothing weak about needing help. There is nothing yeah. weak about having down moments. There's nothing right. weak about being sad or yeah frustrated or any of those things. And so don't let other people shame you into carrying more than you should or holding on longer than you should. Right. Um, and so we'll, if we learn to do that for our, ourselves, then we both will get the help, we'll, we'll get the help that we need, but we'll also inevitably free somebody else to do what they need to do yes. to get help. Yes, I love that. And sometimes other people are just waiting on somebody to give them permission. Right. Wow. Yeah. You know? 
That's good. Well, and, and that's the thing. Um, and, and I'll just refer back to kind of my situation. I was the one that everybody thought she's great. She ain't, there's nothing wrong with her. So I didn't ask for help. I just walked around with those thoughts in my mind. Um, I remember day laying in the bed, praying, asking God to take me. And it, but no, but never would I have uttered those words to anybody in my world because, you know, they're not going to get it. I'm, they think I've got it together, you know, and and so that's a very real um, thing that you describe there, where people they don't have the words, they don't they don't know the actions, and so that's what I'm hoping we can do today. You know, what are those words? What are some of those words? Um, some of those strategies that people can use. Yeah, and, and you brought up a great point about you have this thought you're laying in bed and you're thinking you know you want it to be over but but that's not really what you wanted you didn't want it to be over you wanted the weight to be lifted right and, and even for folks who um die by suicide who completed a suicide in most cases when people are contemplating suicide or they have completed a suicide it's not necessarily that they just want to not exist anymore in mm -hmm. this you know world or earth they want the pain to be gone right right and, and, and it's deciphering that is so important you know yeah yeah, yeah. And, and so and and you know there's when i was younger you know coming up i when i hear people talk about suicide they talk about if they if, if the person didn't complete it then they weren't really serious and they um, were just looking for attention or, you know, mm -hmm. attention seeking. And I'm like, mm -hmm. well, you know, I, I started to better understand it. It's like, well, mm, yes. And what's the problem with that? And like, what's, what's it's a human need. Yeah. It's a basic what human need. With someone wanting to be attended to. Yeah. And so what is the problem with someone needing help? Right. What is, you know, and so we've got to shift how we look and we think about all of this. Like we, we expect humans to act in, you know, superhuman ways. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's so yeah, powerful that's right there. Right. Yes. All right. All right. Well, we're, when we come back, we're going to continue this conversation. Um, stay with us. We'll be back. Yeah. 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 It's another one. All right. All right. So what you just heard is uh, one of the latest from Luciana, and I. Uh, you are a based in Jamaica, correct? Yeah. All right. Welcome. Welcome. I love it. I, I, I'm going like, to hear the whole thing. Come on. No. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, so, Luciana, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, wanted to join you because, or wanted to have you join us today because the song that you released um, is, is really inspiring people through this whole pandemic thing and what's going on. And I, you know, it's like, live your life anyway, do what you, you know, make the best out of life. But I would love for you to just kind of um, articulate a little bit what your um, purpose for that song is and what, what message you wanted to send, you know, to, to your listeners. Okay. To the world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. For us to just take care of ourselves, protect ourselves at this time, seeing that we're having this pandemic right now. And you know, we lost a lot of people. So if you can keep yourself safe, why not just stay in? So yeah. this song now, even though you're inside, you can still enjoy it. Well, I think it's, wait, I didn't hear that last part. Even though you're inside, you can still enjoy same way. So it's not like when you're outside, you're partying and you're at home, you're bored. No, we can play your music. Can do whatever you want to do but you're safe at home yes yes okay so tell us what what it's looking like in jamaica you know so here in the united states and so we're in two different states here so robert and i are in atlanta georgia and um arnita is in milwaukee wisconsin and atlanta georgia just opened everything up tomorrow the mall's open but our cases are still going up um in um, milwaukee and some other places i've seen protesters um, you know, we're against, against staying in, you know, like we are not staying in where we have human rights, like those kind of protesters. Right. <laughs> What's going on in Jamaica? How is it looking in Jamaica? 
Um, our case is now at 463 right now, seeing that um, we have people not abiding by the rules, mm -hmm. while you have some staying in, right? So the cases keep climbing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But uh, the toll, sorry, the death toll is what? Eight person. Okay. Okay. And and so this is a really good time for Jamaica to really take some measures then before it gets, yeah. you know. Yeah. 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 Wow. So how are you mentally surviving through this? You know, Arnita is a, a, a licensed therapist. So we've been talking about our mental health. How have you been keeping your mental health through this? Well, music. Yes. Um, my kids, I've been homeschooling them as well. Hmm. But uh, I, I'm doing all right. I'm doing yeah. All right. I'm, just, I'm just abiding by the rules. Right, right. Me too. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So are you finding that people in your family, your friends, are, are they abiding? I know you said some people aren't. How is your circle? Well, my circle. They're buying better rules. Okay. <laughs> They're buying better rules. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh -huh. Lizzie, Anna, I have a question for you. Um, as far as music, um, let's. Who are your inspirations? Um, you know, who did you grow up listening to um, as a kid, and you know, who do you draw inspiration from? You know, musically. Okay, growing up, I was listening to um, Beyonce, Spice. Gives you best with no spice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> as well. Um, yeah, those are the people that I grew up and listened to. Oh, awesome. I love it. I love yeah. it. Actually, they inspired me to do what I'm doing right now, which is music. Yes. <laughs> and how so, long have you been doing music? It's been 10 years now. Oh, wow. Awesome. My um, official single that I put out was in 2016. Yeah, from MLP label. Okay, and you co-own this label, correct? Yes, I do. Okay, I love it. I love it. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is wonderful. So, so the um. Oh gosh, the question just left me. Ah, it's gone. Um. Oh no, no, no. It was um. Are you doing any live performances? Because one of the things that we're seeing artists do, you know, and DJs, they're getting online, they're doing these live performances during this COVID time, you know. Yes, I do on IG. Okay. Yeah. Okay. With my oh. fans. They're supporting me a lot, which I really I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yes. I've noticed that, that we're really trying to support our artists through, you know, Absolutely. this time. Yeah, it's awesome thing to see. Um the musicians um share their gift with the world. Yes. Um, you know, and for people to enjoy in this time. So thank you for that. Yes. Um, because it's much needed. Um, you know, every we're all sitting there, all of us who are sitting at home, we're looking for things to do. And and just the gift of music just coming through the speakers just changes the atmosphere and yes, lifts so many burdens. So thank you for sharing your gift. Yes. And um before we go, because we only have about two minutes, would you be willing to give us just a 30 second little quick live little song for <laughs> okay <laughs> Let's go. we're gonna make it we're gonna be all right we're gonna make it we're gonna be all right i gotta give thanks and praise for mm. every breath we take we gonna make it. It's gonna be alright. Oh, I love it. Awesome. <laughs> I love it. Okay, Thank how you. can we find you on Instagram? Okay, so on Instagram is Liziana underscore official. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and on Facebook, that's Corolla Taylor. Okay. Got her. All right. <laughs> also on YouTube as well. Okay. Liziana. Liziana as well. Liziana Taylor. Okay. We're going to make sure we follow you on all platforms and we'll love to have you back. Thank yes. you so much. And if much. when you come to the States, please stop by to see us. Yes. No please problem. do. Please do. No problem. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank yes. You. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye. We'll, we'll be right back. Okay.
All right, so <laughs> the research. Um, okay, so looking at the research today, um, I thought it was appropriate to kind of bring back uh, um, an oldie but goodie, a blast from the past okay. theory. And that is, only a nerd would say that, right? Blast from the past. Uh, <laughs> an oldie but goodie <laughs> theory, right. So uh, Maslow's. Maslow, um, I heard of yes. him. You said him before. Yes, Maslow hierarchy of needs. Yeah. Um, and I just feel like that's really relevant right now because, um, you know, and when we're going through something like this, a pandemic, things have changed. There's so much uncertainty. We don't know what's happening tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's happening next week. Um, it, it's a good reminder to know what our basic needs are and to know that it is okay to have these needs because yes. they're normal. So at the base of, if you can picture a triangle, I'm sorry. Yeah, a triangle. A triangle, uh, okay. Yes, at the base of this triangle, we have our psychological needs, our basic needs, which um, include like food, water, warmth is on the list, you guys. Like warmth? Secure, yes. Okay. And, and the security that comes with warmth um, and rest. So when, when Arnita was talking about earlier, you know, we need to be willing to get what we need. Yeah. Rest is actually one of those things. Um, so, okay, it I can take- not the same thing as sleep. It's not. Speak Two to different that. things, yes, say yes. that. Yes, yes. So we, uh, and I'll just fly through the other ones because I really want to hear, I want discussion around this. So we've got okay. our, next is our security needs. Safety needs, security and safety. So we've got, that's that's close to the bottom of our basics. So right now with a pandemic, a lot of us don't feel safe. So it is normal that we're freaking out <laughs> because it's a basic human need. Yeah. Um, then there's belongingness and love. And this is kind of what Arnita and I were talking about just even with physical touch, you know, just having Do we lose to be reaching out. Oh, no, did, we, did you guys lose me? You're back. Am I here? Okay, okay. <laughs> so we have that basic need of belongingness and connecting with people, being you know loved. Um, and then there's esteem needs for us to feel like we're accomplishing something. How is that that being impacted in actualization, achieving one's full potential, including creative activities? All of these things are needs. So if we are feeling lack or feeling empty or feeling odd. It's, it's normal. It's important for us to know it's normal if we're missing one of these things and we're feeling some kind of way. Go ahead now. Uh, Arnita, Robert, I, I, take it away. <laughs> no, you know, that's perfect that you you mentioned um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs and um, our need for belonging, warmth, you know, um, touch, uh, esteem, respect. All of those things are necessary, according, you know, to Maslow, to, for us to really be our best selves and achieve. So to have that self-actualization, so that we achieve kind of our our apex. Right. Um, and so it's we're not in this for a lot of people right now. They do feel unsafe, and and yeah. again, that's that whole um, uh, stress response. The, there's a threat. If there's a threat, it's common that in there would be a feeling of unsafe um, insecurity or not feeling safe and so that that lack of safety may be as a result of a number of things so there may be you know pe people may be feeling unsafe as a result of the virus so am i vulnerable will i catch it will i spread it if i get it will i live through it any of those right. things can mm -hmm. make you feel unsafe but you know there may be people that feel unsafe related to those basic physiological needs food water shelter yeah. all of that but then there's the physical touch like you said right um and do you feel safe in terms of your connection to others do do you feel like you're losing that connection and what does that feel like how yeah. does that make you feel and right. then we've got to find new ways of you connecting and staying connected i will um i saw a post uh, really quickly by another therapist who was sharing something another therapist told him but anyway it was really around how difficult this 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 uh internet the virtual thing is so the idea that we're trying to trick our brains into thinking that we are we're connected we're mm, close. that's and good so, yeah and it's, and it's exhausting so it takes a lot more work but it also doesn't meet the mark so it's not the same thing. okay that is going to be what we talk about when we come back because that's 
Yes, we got to unpack that. Yes. <laughs> we'll be right back. We'll be back. Uh, so the balance challenge this week is um, I want you to check on somebody this week. And, and an authentic. Check on them. Make sure they okay. Everybody needs somebody um, to check on them. Yes. So yeah. be careful not to overextend yourself. You know, do what you can do. If it's mm -hmm. one person, if it's three people, but commit. Ask somebody how they're doing. And and don't accept the politically correct answer. I know that uh, Robert and I have done it. Uh, I will say how we're doing. And and if the answer is too politically correct, like, uh uh, I want right. the real answer. How you really doing? Yeah, yeah. we force each other to give real answers. And I yeah, appreciate yeah. it so much. Yes, me too. <laughs> how you doing? So, no. <laughs> Right. I accept the challenge. So do I. And get the real I answer. Do. And that is your challenge for this week. I accept. <laughs> Me too. Hello, uh, we're back. Uh, well, ooh, that's loud. Okay, that's loud. Very loud. Welcome. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to the live exchange. I'm Dr. Pamela. Don't you I'm love? Robert Pierce. Yes. And yeah. don't you love how we are? You know, we're adapting. Just like you know what? The show. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, it's the Black Judge, the Black Woman Judge. It's a new like it's on CBS. It's a it's a dramatic series. Oh man. Um. Anyway. They are doing their uh, their next episode like this. They're, really? they're acting, are acting out the episode like this. And wow, like, well, let me shout out New Mercies Christian Church today because we did a virtual choir. Everyone oh! was from their home, and we I found the it. choir director directed it from the church, but it, wow. but it was done via Zoom. It was amazing. I love when they I love when choirs do that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's on the site right now, right? Yeah, you can go on yeah, New Mercy's yeah. um, Facebook page and see it. It's amazing. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. So I just told on myself because I didn't, I didn't. I yeah, didn't you didn't come to church. <laughs> <laughs> I just told you know, myself. It, it's amazing. We can catch church on the replay. Uh, you and can, I, yeah. yeah, you, you, yeah. Gotta, you can do a do over. I think this is the first Sunday in a long time where I just didn't listen in the morning. But yeah, but I, I yeah, church. Oh, every day. You have to, today was our 18th anniversary. You really missed one. Ooh, wow. Oh, boy. Yeah. Ooh. I'm telling on you. I'm telling. <laughs> well, let me also <laughs> shout out another church, World Outreach um, Center Yay! in Milwaukee. So uh, I used to attend that church um, with Arnita as a member there. Uh, so I've got, I mean, on here with two of my church members. Yay! And uh, mm -hmm. I love one of the initiatives that I saw them doing, which was they were going to hospitals and sitting in the parking lot in their cars and praying wow. in the parking lot for the for the for the hospitals awesome. and and you know the the medical professionals the patients it was powerful wow i, I know they brought food to the staff as well i i was telling one of you know my friends in church yeah, chantel i was like you guys can come to my house and like I'll stand on the balcony and you can pray for me, Hello. Sing me talk to me, whatever way. Yeah. I'll be happy. <laughs> I mean, awesome. I, I love it. And so um, any initiatives like that, that, you know, that, you know, you're, and I've seen New Mercies go and celebrate people. A woman was cancer free or she yeah. came home. And that was her last day of chemo. Out. Yeah. Oh. You know, I, I just love what I see the church is doing right now. You know, oh, it's, yeah. We, we have so many ways that we can show up without being in the church building. And Arnita did a live about that two weeks ago that I thought was phenomenal about how we, there's still so much we can do. I think it was about that debate about the liquor stores are open, but the church can't be open. And, and she did such a great yeah. <laughs> comeback to that. So awesome. yeah. and I, I'm just going to put you on the spot. So like in a sentence or two, what was the gist of that live? So, so people can, the gist of it, because I had heard a lot of conversation and talk on social media around, you know, why is the church not essential and the liquor store is considered an essential, an essential business? And so, primary, basically, the church is not closed. It's just that you can't have, you know, more than 10 folks there. So, there's that. But in terms of it, the liquor store being an essential business, um, because people who um, have an alcohol addiction, if they go into withdrawal, they can die. So you can't die. You won't die from like cocaine, heroin addiction, you know, withdrawal. I mean, 
um, but you can die from alcohol withdrawal. And so they'll need medical care, which and our hospitals are already overrun. Over so, Makes sense. Yeah. Nobody thinks about that. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's yeah. deep. And and I thought it was just great that you got on to talk about that because it's one of those little yeah. things that we don't know. Yeah, but there, awesome. there's so many ways for the church to plug in. So just like you said, going to the hospital, so Word Outreach Center, um, shout out to my pastors, Pastor Skip and Pastor Melva, but going to the um, hospitals and praying outside, taking medical staff food. Um, mm-hmm. Like I said, there's a you know group of faith leaders that have been um, plugging in to help around the crisis with the, the mass shooting that happened. So there's so many ways for churches and faith communities to plug in right now yeah. that it's okay even if you can't have service inside like you normally would do your virtual service but find other ways to serve when you have a commitment to serve you will find a way to do it yeah oh yeah yeah it, it definitely has shown and proven um what we've been preaching for years is that the church is in a building yeah. it's not the four walls it's the people right. um and um we have we had a wonderful time to um, show that to the world. And I, I commend the churches, big and small. Um, we really showed up and did what we could. We can't do everything, right? but what we could do, um, the churches have really been showing up strong. And um, I hope at the end of this that um, the, the critics will give us credit. Yes. But yes. if not, it's okay. God sees it all. Right. Absolutely. And and we have the opportunity to grow from this. When we talk about, you know, the topic of the show being I'm not OK, now what? One of the now what's can be to get a, become a part of what we're doing um, in the churches, because, you know, as I said, right. with Maslow's neat hierarchy of needs, one of those needs is purpose, self-actualization. Mm-hmm. And doing that it can can help with some of the I'm not OK if if, you know, not for everybody. I mean, maybe they actually need some more help than that, but it's huge in giving somebody purpose. It's true. And there's also research to support giving back and helping others also help. It helps us. It helps yes. boost your mood. You feel better. You find more meaning and purpose in life. So yeah, definitely find ways to help. Right, right. Yeah, so don't, you know, and so yes, get help. Be the help. (laughs) There's multiple ways of doing that. So one of the things that you had um, um, said, Arnita, and we said we were going to come back to it. There was two things, though. And one of them was that, um, uh, gosh, I I forgot it. But sleep doesn't always, I mean, rest doesn't always mean sleep. That was one of the things I thought, wow, that's powerful. Um, But also the virtual relationships and the virtual connections that we're having and that that is not always that is not necessarily the same in terms of the human connection need that we have. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, so it's not the same as having the physical, so being in each other's physical presence. Definitely we can't touch each other. So we can see each other through the screen, but we can't reach out and touch each other, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So there's something about being in each other's physical presence. There's also the energy that we um, give and receive from one another when we are in each other's presence. Mm -hmm. And when we're doing these virtual, you know, working meetings and all kinds of, you know, virtual things, um, we're spending quite a bit of cognitive energy um, in a way kind of tricky, trying to trick ourselves into thinking we're connected or feeling connected. And so in some ways we are connected, but, but we don't have the physical presence of each other and that is essential. And so that part is still lacking right now. And so people are feeling kind of the, 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 the effects of that and maybe wondering why, why am I connecting to all these people but I still feel disconnected. Mm. And so it could be that it's just that we don't have the opportunity to be in each other's physical presence and that's what that feeling is coming from. And it may not, necessarily be that something is wrong with you everything's right with you to me to be close to others yes. um and so then we don't want to pathologize what's normal what's human right, right. And so in a lot sometimes right. we do so we want to be oh, careful yes. not to do that because yeah. all that does is add more weight and stress and anxiety because now something's wrong with me that everyone else is feeling connected and i'm not yeah. most people aren't in in some way 
Right. Right. Well, you know, when we uh, crit criticize somebody for perhaps, you know, um, acting out or being really down or feeling a certain way, um, and the root of that is that they don't have a particular need that's fulfilled, they're actually behaving normally. And, and I think that's one of the things we don't realize is that if I'm behaving or I'm acting or in some, some certain way, what's the root of that? And it's probably because there's some kind of need that's not being fulfilled. Precisely. And when we consider that when people are even having acting out of trauma, so they've got the traumatic, you know, their symptoms related to trauma and it's it's in it's um it's influencing their behavior. Everyone is acting as they know to do they doing what they they're doing their best in that moment. And so right. I never use the word crazy when we talk about mental illness or different disorders. People will use that word and I'm I always have a visceral reaction to it. Yeah. I've never met and I don't care how many people I've met or worked with or if they have a serious mental illness, psychotic disorder, I've never met anyone who was crazy. Yeah. Everyone <laughs> is doing their best in that moment. And depending on how their brain functions. So if your brain Brain tells you that there are voices and there are none in reality, you are operating based on the fact that your brain said there are voices. My brain is telling me that I can see you all and I can hear you all. For someone to come in and tell me different. Yeah. Right. Right. And so your reaction to that, if there are voices that you hear, is a normal reaction to yeah. hearing voices. Yeah, because if you keep asking me questions and I say nothing, and not because there are technical difficulties. I can hear you. I'm just not responding. Mm -hmm. That would be abnormal. Yeah. Right. Right. right? Yeah. So I'm, exactly. I'm responding normally when I hear your voice and I hear you ask me a question or you're talking to me and we're in conversation. That's a normal response for me to say something, respond back. Right. Yeah. So, so we have to stop pathologizing what's normal. Oh my we, can treat, we can treat what when something doesn't um, function as it should. So then the brain is not functioning in the way that it was designed to function. Right. So then how do we treat that? Um, but we don't want to call people crazy or pathologize um, behavior that is adaptive to what their experience is. Right. Or, you know, or suppress something that we're feeling that we need to be responding to. Um, and, and that's the entire purpose of the show is, is, you what you're feeling if you're not okay is probably exactly what you're supposed to supposed be feeling to feel. under yeah. certain circumstances and so the, the key as robert said earlier in the show you acknowledge it but do something about it reach out keep reaching out people say you know yeah. what oh if people do call you crazy or people do minimize keep reaching out mm -hmm. with that said arnita how can people reach out to you? Yes. So people can reach out to me. My phone number, you can call um, if, if they want to schedule an appointment. It's 414-367-9298. Otherwise, you can find me on social media, Arnita Holloman, on Facebook. Same thing on, I think, Instagram and Twitter. Which I'm not really on much, but you can you can contact me there or, or my phone um, or Arnita.com and you, you leave your information. I'll get back to you. And she's Googleable. Like if you Google her name I'm in Milwaukee, Googleable. she's right. Googleable. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Arnita, for joining us today. This is valuable information. Yes, it was. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you for having me. This yes. was a great conversation. Yes, absolutely. And this will not be the last time. We're definitely going to have you back. So. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us for such an important show. I hope that you were able to get some nuggets from it that um, that you will use this week, including checking on somebody this week. Um, so we're here every Sunday from six to eight, and uh, we will be back next week. And we are actually going to talk relationships next week. Yes. Yeah, on that. <laughs> oh, yeah, gonna be all fun. Right. <laughs> all right. So have an excellent week, and remember that when we dialogue better, we do better. See you next week. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>